Don't be filled that organic farmers don't use sprayers and don't put things on the crops. I'm spraying a field of wheat now with a fungicide. It's totally in here now and in flower. This field looks amazing and it used to really struggle. It used to look terrible. It used to be quite wet in the middle. Real sticky, horrible ground. And this is the one that we cut some barley on it once, drilled it with spring barley. And the idea was to harvest the spring barley like late summer. And it was like sort of, sort of shotgun cropping. So it was um, two, two crops in one year. Anyway, it got too wet and we never harvested the barley. But then we drilled it with beans and then we took the beans off it and now we put the wheat on it and it's just totally transformed the field and the last field I did that on where I put spring barley and immediately after winter barley I managed to combine it, I didn't really get a lot off it but that totally transformed the soil as well so I don't know what it does but on heavy, sticky, crappy ground it really makes a difference because this wheat looks fantastic to be fair and normally it'd be quite patchy and a bit horrible so I'm pleased with that I'm not sure if you can see on the camera See the little green lines sort of going around that bend there, like every sort of foot, and then there it's like a deeper green. That's where the boom section, I haven't turned the radar on fast enough. So the spray pattern was perfect over there, but here it was too low and the spray pattern hadn't formed properly, so it's missed bits. So anyway, it's only fungicides, so I'm going to overlap it, but it shows the importance of the boom height. This is a patch of winter wheat. If you look, there it's pretty good but where it was kind of wet lay wet and flooded it was really poor here so we stitched some spring stuff in so it's come on quite a lot now and it's got heads inside there now if you feel so hopefully by by the time we come to cut this wheat which was the winter wheat the bigger stuff with the heads on this will have caught up it might be a bit damper on the day we harvest it but at least we'll be getting something off these burr patches because they've now got springs ditched in and even if it's just straw but well, it's better than having a burr patch that weeds are growing so we'll see what happens at harvest Dave is just doing some double tip and he's smashed the pile that's all done now the baby male has died again when it gets warm it doesn't want to move so when it goes down we'll move again hopefully they can come out and fix that today Let's just move it to the chip. I'm just filling the sprayer and Adam's boot loading up the last of the straw to take to the horse yard later. There are loads everywhere and the devil. And a shaky camera. Sam's out with the hedge cutter now. He's going to cut the roadside hedges for the sight lines coming out of fields for harvest. Uh, we're only allowed to cut where it's a highway hazard. Andrew's just moving a bit of soil with a new trailer. Holds about 16 tonne of soil. We had just short, just over 20 ton of stone on it before just to try it. Some of this stone here. It's a partner. Dougie's dad, whose birthday it was yesterday, sent me some biscuits and the chocolate, but I better put some in the brew room as well. Just filled the sprayer now to go and spray some actual on some wild oats and then realised I'm going to meet the new police chief crime commissioner for Merseyside. So I'm going to pot spray in the shed. Hopefully the spray will be okay and it won't go off because it's only going to be an hour nip up there meet them they've been out to the farm the previous one a few times anyway she's been replaced now by somebody else so we're going to meet them with the nfu this is where they train the police dogs and this is where the horses live i think they need a bigger place and i'm sure i can provide that no a real life police horse i think they look a lot much bigger in the street i think it's because they've got when the... they tacked up as well don't they yeah they've got stilts on them The chickens have started digging the spuds. Or having a dull spaff. Let them do the drills away. Diggers all strapped on and loaded up, ready to go up the road to the nursery to do some extensions. Just at the village all finding the hedges up so you can see you better getting out the gateway. And uh, keeping them under control a bit. This is no fly tip at the moment. Got to come up later with our jet wash to see if we can get the graffiti off the back wall. Someone come. It's annoying. Everyone's out spraying today. There's Gordon over there, me in this field. This is where the geese ate it, so it's still bottle green, but it has recovered a little bit. And further over in the field, it's yellow.
yellow because it's ripening. I'll show you when we get over. Yeah, this it's getting really yellow here now. Well, not really yellow, but it's turning. So not long to harvest. Just need a header for the combine. Just got to cut through Bill and Joe's field out of Gordon's way to get to our field behind it. Same we go down the road. Two, two sprays in the same field. Back out in the sunflowers. Now this one where we measured to that leaf, that's now 30 centimetres, which is 12 inches. And I think we only measured it, was it two or three days ago? And it was six and a half inches. So they're really racing on now. Also, some of the thistles are as well. They're in here. Well, they've definitely picked up pace. And when you look across the field, you are seeing now more sunflowers than cleavers. So that's really good because hopefully they're going to start drowning the light out from the weeds underneath. We'll go over there and have a look if them ones have completely died yet or they're still a bit sick where we tried the special spray on to see whether it'd take out the cleavers and leave the sunflowers behind. This is where we sprayed the spray. If you look, it looks a bit brown. And then that one, well, I think it's killed it. I don't think it's going to recover now. And the cleavers are just a little bit yellow. So it's a good job we didn't go through the whole field with it because we'd have probably just wiped them all out and um, had to start again. The other fields are taking on now anyway. They're, they're like a few weeks behind, obviously. Sweet corn's now moving away, so we'll go and have a check, check on that tomorrow, I think. And then this field here now, this is the one that was sown yesterday when with the school children watched us sow it through Zoom. That is now rolled, so we want to put a pre-emergence on that. So we're going to wait and hopefully get a little bit of rain because it'll work better in the rain. But we can't wait too long because if the sunflowers start to come up then and all the other weeds come up, then the pre-emergence spray won't be as effective. So we'll just kind of second guess what the weather's going to do. I don't want to sort of put it onto really dry soil because it won't be very effective. But then the same thing is, it's a balancing act on, on how late we can go. I had a really good meeting today with the Police Chief Crime Commissioner. She's took over from the old one who had met a few times. She'd been out on farm and she was actually the deputy so i actually had met her before which i didn't realize at the time anyway she's really keen to make sure that rural isn't forgotten about because being very urban fringe there's a lot of stuff goes on within the, the city center and the conurbations whether it be stabbing shootings and all this kind of stuff and you know we just need to remind her that rural crime does happen whether it's gps is being stolen her courses um fly tipping is another one really that they need to take a bit of a more of a, a stand on and different things like that so it was good to sort of explain all the different things that are going on she is going to come out to the farm when she can because of covid and all that they're not really doing many visits and we like to wear masks and stuff like that but it was really good to meet her and also i made contact as well for sorting out the track to run next year because the old police chief uh, sorry constable has moved over to somewhere else and someone's taken his place so hopefully we can we can sort something out with that interesting to see where they kept the police horses as well so that was that little field which should be bigger really but never mind this is the bit that we sown with sweet corn last Wednesday morning and it's up, which is good. So we're, we're going to have some sweet corn near the back of the yard, which is nice. These are the beans now, lots of flowers, got a bee here, nice bee there, looking at the flowers. Loads of them, smell gorgeous, they're still growing, so that's good, the more they grow, the more flowers they have, the more pods they have, the more they're going to yield. And hopefully we won't lose any money on them this year like we have the last few. So this is the trailer I picked up yesterday. It's been working today. Lots of people were asking, how much does it hold? Well, we put some filled it with soil this morning. It holds about 16 and a half tonne of soil. Put a load of stone on and it comfortably holds 20 tonne of stone. You could probably get 21 or 2 on it if you needed to. It's only rated 20 tonne anyway. That's why it's a 20 tonne there. So far, happy with it. Um, I do like the way it's got the triangle at the top. Stop stuff, it either falls in the trailer or out the trailer as it's loaded and doesn't sit on the top and then falls out on the road and hits something. So that's pretty good. Brakes are sharp on it. Obviously it's on air brakes. A lot thicker steel than the grain trailers are made that out of, obviously, because it's a, it's a rock and stone and soil trailer. So happy with that, because it means they're not going to get wrecked. It weighs 1,400 kilos more than the JPM um, dump trailer, if you will. But a lot of that could be the tyres because the JPM's now on super singles and this is on flotations. So I reckon there'd be a good 100 kilos in each tyre. So it probably still weighs a ton more, a lot more still in it and it's got 20% more capacity. We might park them next to each other tomorrow and we can compare the differences between the two trailers anyway. But yeah, I'm happy with it. Waited a long time for it. I wanted it 
sort of in, in January, March time when we were doing a lot of work with it. Anyway, I had to wait and it's turned up now, but yeah, pleased with it. Today's quiz question is, what's this little windy handle on the dump trailer for? Yesterday's quiz question was in fact, the, it was a socket holder. Loads of people got it right, even though it looked, didn't really look like much. You put your sockets on it, keeps them all in order, stops them all falling over in your toolbox. So it was in the workshop, that's what that was. So well done if you got that right. Have a go at today's. It's on the front of this trailer, a little windy thing. A little bit of update on how the Bateman build's going on that you're all paying for by watching this channel. The chassis looks like it's been primed, so there's a picture of that. The cab is starting to go together, so there's a picture of that. And the wheels and tyres have arrived, so here's a picture of that. So thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for everyone that's subscribing. Thanks for everyone that's liking. Don't forget if you watch the video, like it and share it. Tell people about it because that sprayer is going to arrive in a few weeks and I've got to pay for it. So I want the income from YouTube to do that. And that's what you're going to do by watching it. So you'll all own a bit of that sprayer. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all tomorrow.